the following review is going to have a lot more mature content than usual, so be aware of that when you're watching this video. Thank you very much and enjoy. Hey guys, guess what? I make reviews too! You know you were thinking I'm also doing top 10 Pokemon stuff? No! I actually play other stuff besides Pokemon, like this game I just got recently. South Park, The Stick of Truth. I've been waiting for this one for what seems to be forever, and to be honest with you, the fact that it's been critically acclaimed really makes me excited to play for it. And that's besides the fact of how much I love the show. It's probably my favorite show of all time. I watched it all the way back when I was growing up in Israel, and to this very day, which is really good that it's going strong, unlike other cartoon shows nowadays, which is really unfortunate. However, what I was really thinking to myself is not the fact that it's being good on its own merits, but it's probably the best South Park game ever, considering the fact that pedigree isn't really all that high. You've probably seen other videos about other South Park games, like this one. And who can forget this one? Spoiler alert, they both suck. However, the game I want to talk about today is a game that I played quite a few times in my childhood, and by childhood I mean my bar mitzvah, which is this one right here. South Park Chef's Love Shack. Um, right away when you're looking at the back of the box right there, you can clearly tell at the very least they replicated the look of the show, which is definitely better in my opinion than using 3D models, but uh... <laughs> Uh, where one is a shooter and the other one is a kart racer, this is a trivia game. A trivia game with mini games, so it's kind of a fusion of both Mario Party and You Don't Know Jack. And probably not neither as good as any of them. Question is though, is it at least better than those other two? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's time to go into Chef's Love Shack. Oh yeah! And we're all the off to a great start, yippee! Ah uh, yes, it's very nice for a freaking video game to let me know that the show is on at 10 p.m. Central. Imagine if the show was cancelled, wasn't even relevant anymore. Do not do that, Comedy Central. Watch you. The game takes place as well a game show on South Park Public Access, starring Chef as the host of a show alongside Ray the announcer called uh, Chef's Love Shack. Yes, that's how they spell the word love. Haha, <laughs> funny. Even though Chef expected some hot chicks to play in his game show to win a night with him, all he got instead are our favorite grade schoolers as the playable characters. And he's not a big fan of that. And I can't really blame the guy for being upset about it. I mean, if you had to spend a hot night with grade schoolers, you would most likely be doing 20. This game was made far before that episode, for the record. The best part about this game right away is the voice acting, because thankfully you can get to hear the dulcet sound of Matt Stone and Trey Parker, and of course the late Isaac Hayes' chef. Hello everyone, welcome to Chef's Love Shack. I'm your host, Chef. And let me address this right now before this gets any more controversial. I am unfortunate of what happened to Isaac Hayes in 2006, and it really is unfortunate with this whole craziness that happened after the episode Trapped in the Closet and the whole debacle with Return of Chef. Point is, I really like the guy. I think he's a really good singer. I really liked him doing the Shaft theme song. And obviously, I love his work as Chef. His songs always made me laugh, so... Isaac Hayes, thank you so much for your hard work. Rest in peace, and... Quite frankly, just starting the game and hearing simultaneously in the background makes me very happy, so thank you for that. But while the voice acting is faithful to the show, the writing is not. Mostly because you're gonna hear the same jokes over and over again, especially the friggin' intro. It's South Park, there are no lovely ladies. It's South Park, there are no lovely ladies. Even the player select screen feels like a chore, as you have to wait 10 seconds for the game to realize how many people are playing. Ah, uh, why is it so hard to program press down to make it? You can play the game in rounds, with the most being 8, which usually lasts for about 40 minutes tops. Each round has the same structure, three questions and then a minigame. 
Nothing much to say about the trivia portion as it is pretty much a multiple choice question. But it doesn't have the sense, sense of humor of the show which really drags the game's pace. And don't get me wrong, the trivia works perfectly fine, but without using stuff like visual aids or clever writing, this game just becomes completely forgettable. Okay, fine, not every question is generic, some of them are actually pretty funny to listen to, and I especially like the options for this specific one. And Cracker reached gold status with this album. Uh... Everyone knows that should be the right answer to everything. I love you. Okay, I do have one gripe against the trivia portion, and that's the fact that when you get an answer wrong, you don't actually get to see what the right answer is. And the reason why they do that is kind of cheap in my opinion, because the questions in this game repeat. So I would imagine the developers of this game thought to themselves, Duh, why think of original questions when we can just not tell people what the right answer is, so that way they either have to guess every single time the question pops up, or if they got it right, they'll just get free points. Here's a pro tip for you guys. When you have a trivia game, make sure that your questions don't repeat and you have a wide selection to choose from to actually test people's knowledge. Thankfully, the game tries its best to break the pace from the growing monotony of answering questions. One segment is called Double Down, which essentially means that you can wedge your points and if you get the question right, you win points, you don't get it right, you lose points. After that, there's also the Wheel of Fortuitousness, which essentially, it's Wheel of Fortune. Spin the wheel, mash the button, and hope for the best. Though most of the time you're gonna get nothing and the game mocking you for that. Thanks. But definitely the most exciting one is the pressure round. You need to identify 7 out of the 10 items that are presented and put them in the right category. You accomplish the task, and uh, let's just say there's a reason why I put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. Everybody in the but enough about the trivia, let's talk about what's really good about this game, for the most part. The minigames. As of course you would expect, the game chooses the minigame out of a roulette, because we've never ever seen that before. That being said, the minigames themselves are not bad, because they actually copy other game styles, which, you know what they say, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Asses in Space is clearly Asteroids ripoff. Pizza Patrol is Paperboy, and I dare you to tell me that you don't know what that game is. And it also copies classic games like Simon Says with Spank the Monkey. And also, who can forget the controller breaking Tug of War? There's a freaking Tug of War mini game in Chef's Love Shack. At the very least, when you hold your controller, you don't go up like this, like in freaking Mario Party 1, but it's still annoying to do this the whole time and not even understanding what the game even wants you. Until we figured it out, me and my friend, we realized the fact that we had to basically press one button until the game tells us to pull and then switch the button, and the game doesn't tell you to do so. You know what? I'm gonna say this. Every game that has a Tug of War mini game in it officially loses a point in my scale. Tug of Wars should never be in video games, ever! Now, just because those minigames copy other doesn't make them bad. I actually enjoyed the whack-a-mole game Whack-a-Zombie. And also the game where you're trying to save Scuzzlebutt from fire is actually really, really fun. My favorite minigame is probably Roundup, not only for the fact you can throw eggs and chickens all over the place, but you can toss them at the opposing players, grab them, and throw them at your coop to gain more points. If only to see Kyle magically being able to toss Cartman away to his coop. However, some minigames are not good, like Stampede for example, because running by mashing buttons while trying to jump over logs is awful. Even a game that I wanted to like like Bad Kitty suffers from really stiff control. The computer AI can be really weird sometimes, especially when you do the go-karts minigame and you can finish an extra lap before they finish the final one. Oh, and there's this too. The worst offender in this whole minigame selection thing is the fact that we have two minigames that are exactly the same. You know, it's like that power trick when someone puts an object under a cup and you have to find the right one once the guy mixes them. Well, it's exactly the same exact thing. You have Soda Shake and you have Chicken Lava who are exactly the same idea. Guys, there are not that many minigames in this game to begin with, and you cannot even think of one original idea? And true, most games have variety in them, but it doesn't change the fact that after a while, you start seeing the same minigames pop up. 
That's right, the minigames repeat as well. And you're probably asking to yourself how many minigames Chef Loves Check actually have. Well... There are only 23 minigames in the whole thing! Only 23! 23! Games like Mario Party gives you at the very least 40 minigames to play with, and that's one of the sparse ones. Imagine if I'm talking about the GameCube ones when they have at least 80, but no, no, this, this is what really gets me. About half of those minigames are only for one player, and especially because two of them you can only play as Cartman. So, only 12 games you can play with friends together at the same time, and only one of those minigames, only one, requires you to have more than two players at the same time. So this party game that they specifically wanted four people to play has half of its mini games dedicated to only one player. Logic people! Ah! Now I'm gonna use my amazing deductive skills and pretty much come to the conclusion that this game was incredibly rushed. As you can tell, there's not even an options menu at the main screen. There's not even an options menu. You can't even play the mini games unless you play the main thing and slog through hours of trivia. And there is nothing to unlock, nothing to discover. The game doesn't save your score or anything like that. There's not even need for a memory card. This is one of the few games I've ever seen in my life when there's actually no memory required whatsoever. It's like, you're done with the game, let's just loop back to the frickin' intro skin again! You, and me, and you, simultaneous hating! Thankfully, one of the things that Chef Love Shack does do right is being faithful to the source material. It looks like South Park, even though I have to admit that sometimes the sprites are a little blurry. The main problem I have is the animation, and though it sounds weird because I'm criticizing South Park here, which is known to not have the best animation in the world, but even in the show itself, there are more than two frames of animations. I mean, what the heck is this supposed to mean? Is there a rodent that is pens that is eating his chocolate salty balls or something? And can someone tell me what kind of celebration is this? Time! <laughs> Pussy! What's even more insulting is the lip syncing. Okay, I'm gonna start out by shaking this can. God, I've seen better lip syncing in Sonic Adventure. One. Well, okay, I think a certain young man has had some experience making the monkey, okay? Because everyone in video games talks like this. The game also has lots of low times, which can come at opportune moments, especially when you think the character's gonna say something. Damn, boy! What are Riveting. But they're not really long, they're just too frequent sometimes. If you have to buy this game, buy it for the Dreamcast, because the PS1 version looks ugly as sin and has downsampled audio. Going solo, huh? How many rounds are we playing today? Just a quickie then. You're and then 64 now, version. <laughs> Why won't you take a listen? I only got one thing to say about that. Also, to me, it seems kind of sad that the developers even tell you to shut off the game. And yes, I know it's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek, but I can tell a cry for help when I see one, so let's just move on to the final cut. On the positive side, the game definitely retains the look of the show. It looks like South Park, and thankfully they're not using 3D models or anything. The audio presentation is good as well, both from the voice acting from the cast of the show, and also the soundtrack is pretty good, so I'll give the game that. And some of the minigames are pretty fun too. On the negative side, the questions are repetitive, prepare to answer the same thing a lot. Having only 23 minigames is extremely limited and lame. Although the small number of minigames, not all of them are polished, and some of them are even repeated, which is really insulting. And overall, the biggest problem, it's just freaking boring and feels like it drags most of the time. To be honest, guys, despite all my rage, this is probably the best South Park game that came out in the classic era. Even though that doesn't really say a whole lot, because the other two are really that awful. But at least it functions as a trivia game, which I can say more about the other two. Even though it has repetitive questions, repetitive minigames, audio glitches, and lame animation, and just a general lack of care that unfortunately seemed to plague this entire production. It will take another 15 years until we get a proper South Park game that all of us fans waited for, but as for this one, it is just below average, which is why I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of 10. It's kinda entertaining when you're with friends, but I wouldn't recommend multiple playthroughs. Sorry.
everybody in the pool. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. As of course you can, subscribe to me right over there if you want to check more of my stuff. And of course, I also have links for my Twitch account, for my Twitter, and for my Facebook if you just want to follow me or read more about my antics if you'd like. Although I'm not sure why you want to do it, but eh, you know, you're bored, I guess. Also, on this side right over there, I have a video by Cat Icarus, and he did a great review on the original South Park game for the PS1, which is, by the way, much worse than South Park Chef's Love Shack. And on that side, I have a video of my top 10 Pokemon Tybix that really confused me. Visually alone, please. You have to realize that. Anywho, guys, I'll try to make more videos in the future. And the last thing I have to say about Chef's Love Shack is screw this game. I'm gonna play this instead, so goodbye guys. Blah.